So before we get into breaking down the couples that do eventually get engaged, I want to segment a video just for first impressions because sometimes we don't really have a chance to talk about people who didn't end up getting engaged. So I wanna talk about a few people who really got my attention in those first interviews and some of the very first dates and just let you guys know the sort of things that I'm looking out for when I am watching Love is Blind to get an idea about what we may expect to see on the season. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new, welcome to my channel. My name is Stephanie. I'm Buile, Stephania for short, and I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist. Today, we're getting into my first impressions of Love is Blind season six. If you're curious, stay tuned. And thank you to today's sponsor, Babbel. Babbel is one of the world's top language learning apps. You can start speaking a new language in as little as three weeks. The language that I'm trying to learn right now is Spanish. And the first reason we do travel to a lot of Spanish speaking countries. I always wish that I could be more fluent when I speak. Honestly, it's so embarrassing when you start a conversation in Spanish. I'll be like, hola, como esta? And they'll speak back to me. And then as soon as they ask me, me a question conversations over and I'm so embarrassed so I decided it was time to stop playing around and actually focus on learning my goal is to become conversational another reason is professionally I want to be able to support more clients I've had a client come in and they don't speak English and we have to call on the phone a translator and it's so disruptive to the therapeutic process I want to be able to help more people if you're interested in trying Babbel for yourself get 60% off by by using the link in my description box. Let me know what language you're interested in learning in the comments. And now let's get back to the video. Disclaimer, A, there will be spoilers. So I'm talking about castmates, but I'm actually not talking about who ends up getting engaged. So if you haven't watched it, this video may be safe to watch if you're okay with light spoilers. Secondly, remember, I have never met any of these people. I'm none of these people's therapists. So I cannot give definitive answers for any of the behaviors that we've seen. All I can say is what it reminds me of in terms of my clinical work as well as was consistent with research and formal diagnoses. Okay, so let's jump right in. For the most part, it takes people being in dates and having interactions over time to really solidify an opinion, but some people, you develop a strong opinion right off the bat as a therapist with clients. Some people, you come in, you get a very solid understanding of what problems may be contributing to the issues that they're facing in their life. And when I'm looking at shows, whether it's scripted or reality, I have the same mindset. So, you know, sometimes Sometimes my inclinations are wrong and sometimes they're right on par. So the first person who made an impression on me was absolutely Jessica in the lounge. Vanessa asked Jessica to talk about her plan for sharing with her dates about her daughter. She said that she will not be sharing that she has a daughter until she has a connection with people and her rationale was so that they could like her for her. I want to give people the chance to like get to know me individually first. I feel like I'll just know when the time is right to tell somebody. The problem with that plan would be if a person likes you, develops feelings for you, but you having a child is a deal breaker for them. All the care, concern, love in the world is not going to make it so that that is no longer a problem in however many days you all have left in the experiment. So from the very beginning, I was concerned about that plan. I thought that if she wanted to ensure she had someone who was comfortable with being a father, then that should have been something that she felt comfortable bringing up early on in the dates. It feels like this big reveal when in actuality, a significant portion of your identity and your life revolves around being a mother, you're going to have to tiptoe around significant aspects of yourself in order to keep that information at bay. So I immediately thought that that was not going to be a good plan. We did ultimately see that that plan backfired. To me, it seemed as though Jessica had somewhat of an insecurity about someone wanting to be committed to a single mother. So she kind of wanted to feel safe enough to share that aspect of herself which I totally understand. But with such an expedited process, you don't have the time to drop a bomb like that with two days left for a proposal. She later on accused Jimmy of cheating her out of this process. You ruined this opportunity for me. You ruined it. 
And you should be ashamed of yourself for letting me feel that way. And I think that that's unfair because if it was something he wasn't going to be comfortable with, you really needed to know that right away so that you did have an opportunity to connect with other people. We can't convince a person that something is not a deal breaker. And ultimately that obviously was a factor in his choice. Was it the right choice? I have no idea, but I will say that it was a factor and that her plan I think very much got in the way of her love is blind trajectory going the way that she wanted it to go. Now remember, I'm only doing first impressions. I'm not talking about what happens later on. I'm not even talking about specific dates. I will get to all of that, I promise. But I've had so many thoughts on this season already and I wanted to get you guys something a little bit sooner than later. Obviously the next person who made a huge impression was Matthew. Matthew really concerned me with the way that he was engaging with participants. He came in with a certain level of arrogance and a lack of respect for the people that he was dating. He would walk out of dates. He wanted to ask his list of questions and refused to even answer questions that he had asked someone else to answer. What about you? You know, I was just gonna ask the questions. I wasn't really anticipating getting the same one back. Oh my God. So he really put himself in a position where it looked as though he felt entitled to controlling the flow of the date. This is something that you should absolutely pay attention to if you are dating, whether this happens on Love is Blind or in the real world, even if you are texting someone and it feels like they might want to be interrogating you or asking you questions to get to know you, but are very uncomfortable responding back when you ask questions that means that that person is waiting for you to earn their trust to answer questions whereas they believe that they have a right to information that you may find sensitive or confidential or maybe you're comfortable sharing it with the expectation that it would be a reciprocal exchange so that was something early on that really made me uncomfortable watching Matthew on the screen. I know a lot of people like to see diagnoses. I'm not always comfortable with giving a diagnosis to people I have absolutely had no one-on-one -on -one time with, that's not fair. But I will just say that I have seen some of the behaviors he showed are consistent with some of the behaviors we would see with narcissistic personality disorder, which is you have a grandiose perception of self. You view yourself as superior to most of the people that you engage with and you only will engage with people that you perceive to be similarly suited or at a more elevated level than you, right? So that's exactly what we saw. He thought that he could be the judge, jury, and the executioner in deciding whom he would even give an opportunity to have a conversation with. On a show that's designed like this, where you have a limited amount of time and a set amount of time to talk with someone, that is just absolutely not only disrespectful to your castmates, but also very disrespectful to the process. I was questioning in the beginning what it was about AD that made him open up and you know, what we ultimately see is that it clearly was not something so unique that she was the only person that he felt safe with. I will also say that some of those behaviors would align with antisocial personality disorder, which is really characterized by a disregard for other people. But that is a very serious diagnosis and something that would be concerning. Again, I'm not diagnosing him with that, but just if you're questioning what those behaviors look like in the real world, those are some behaviors that I would pay attention to that would make me curious about a diagnosis like that. Now, I have seen people say he may be on the autistic spectrum. That's absolutely a possibility. Again, I don't feel comfortable giving him a diagnosis, but these could be behaviors. Now, the reason that I would be resistant to that diagnosis particularly is because we don't typically see that there is a disregard for specific people with a diagnosis like that, right? We see that he has the capacity to have conversations with people, open up, but he has to hold them in high regard. So I would think of the other two diagnoses more closely aligning with those behaviors, but there's so much that we might not even see playing out on screen that it's not fair to say these are the diagnoses that he has. It's just those behaviors are consistent with those diagnoses. And as you can see, we have more than one diagnosis that could be a possibility. So don't take this as a definitive diagnosis. I have to say that so many times because people in the comments get confused as to why we're throwing out 
out diagnoses, but I use these videos for educational purposes. And a lot of my subscribers are actually therapists and training. And these are behaviors that they need to understand what they look like as they're starting to consider what their potential diagnoses would be for their clients. Another thing about Matthew that we have to keep in mind is that he seems to have a very distorted perception of how he is received. So he says, hey, Superman had a cold demeanor. So he's viewing himself as like the underdog in the situation. He says, you know, America, they do love a good underdog and they do love comebacks. I think I now got the entire country of America on my side. I don't think that is the case. I could be wrong about that, but from what I've seen, my personal view, I don't believe that most people were rooting for him. I think most people were probably very confused about the interactions between him and AD. And then I personally felt that once Amber came out and started sharing about her experience with Matthew, things started adding up and making a lot more sense. Now let's talk about Chelsea. The thing that to me played out with Chelsea from the very beginning is having a distorted perspective of conversations. So the first time we saw that is when she shares with Jimmy that she has been married before. And Jimmy's response was- It doesn't scare me, to be okay. honest. I heard bigger news today that scared me a little bit more. Uh about me or just in general? Other people. Oh. He didn't say what that news was exactly, but I got some crazier news today and this is honestly not the craziest thing I've heard. And for some reason, you just see Chelsea hear that and emotionally start breaking down, hearing that he's being critical and judgmental and upset and she comes back to the lounge and she's crying and it was obvious I think to most viewers definitely obvious to me that Jimmy's intention was to actually reassure her and say this is not a big deal to me I'm not worried about that at all and what she heard was this is a big problem you're not gonna like everyone and that's okay <laughs> that's the exact opposite of what I'm trying to tell you right now so Chelsea has what we see play out with the episodes that have aired so far. I'm all the way up to episode six. What we see with her is often projection in that whatever she is believing or feeling, she projects it on to whomever she is speaking with. In that case, I believe that she thought this was going to be a big deal. So she projected that onto Jimmy that he was also receiving it as a big deal. And we see that pattern playing out in the episodes, right? So for me, that was the first thing that really concerned me because I was like did I miss something was this edited weird I always have to ask that because they're watching an edited show was this edited weird where maybe he did say something that insinuated this was a big problem for him and we just didn't see that but after seeing what unfolds later on it was clear to me that this is a pattern for Chelsea with how she interprets and receives things more than what people are actually saying to her another person who left a strong impression on me was Clay because from early on Clay tells AD that looks are extremely important to him. He wants her to describe to him what she looked like. Naturally I, I would say I kind of lean towards more like petite. My, my favorite attribute is like lips, butt and all that stuff. And that sounds like so shallow and all that but it's like caring what your best attributes are. If, if I'm a proposed that's something I need to know. You're absolutely on the wrong show. There is nothing wrong with looks being important to you. I would argue looks are important to most of us. Hence why a show like Love is Blind exists because it's an experiment to see how far can a relationship go when you aren't able to see what a person looks like. And for Clay to say that just made me question why he was on a show like this. I also thought it was interesting when AD was opening up to him about her frustrations with Matt. She wasn't sharing a lot of details, but enough to to let him know what was going on and he got very very heated are you not feeling me or are you are because what you just told me has nothing to do with me now him calling her out on using her time with him to talk about another man i thought was completely fair however the level of frustration that caused within him the anger that came out as a result of that 
I thought showed signs of difficulty with emotional regulation. So that was another person that I was like, hmm, if he moves further along in this process, how could those tendencies play out? Now, Johnny, one of the things that really stood out to me, and I don't know if he meant to say this or maybe I heard it wrong, but when Amy shared that she has a really close relationship with her brother and that her worst fear is something happening to her brother, He's on the spectrum of autism and has ADHD. Mm. My dad's his legal guardian, but like if something were to happen, God forbid, I would be the next in line to be like a caretaker for my brother. It was interesting because Johnny was telling her that he totally relates to that because he has a close relationship with his siblings. He's your brother. Like I know that if the exact same thing happened with like my little brother or my little sister, I would be doing the exact same footsteps too. Yeah. I know I'm on the exact same page as you with this one. But he also says, yeah. If I heard something like this before, like, it's actually really, really sad to say, but like, this is like two weeks ago and I heard this, I probably would have like wrote you off and just been like that. It. So he was saying that he's grown to where that wouldn't make that, I don't know, I guess a red flag for him. So that was just something that was puzzling to me that I was like, you know, are we going to see difficulty with her managing relationships with her family? It's a valid concern if it's too overwhelming to think about taking care of someone else's sibling but I'm curious about what level of change is possible within two weeks. I don't know if he meant to say that, if he was just nervous and it was his anxiety talking, but to hear him say that it was something that would have made him dip out a couple of weeks ago, that was concerning to me because how much growth could you do on that in two weeks? So I know we have so many more people to talk about with this season, but I wanted to share with you some of my strongest first impressions. Some of these things I'm already seeing playing out with later episodes and some things, it was you know just a first impression, but luckily it didn't end up panning out into being an issue. I'd like to know what some of your first thoughts were. What are some of the first things that stood out to you about what you saw with these people? Did I miss anyone that left a really strong first impression on you? I love to get the conversations going with you guys. I'm trying to think about the best way to structure these videos. You know, last season I did more like individual and couple videos. Before I've done a breakdown just by couple. I've done specific videos for After the Altar and season two, I did one big video with a few lines about every couple. So curious about your ideas on how you want me to structure these videos it'd be good to know exactly what you all want me to talk about and that way i can get a good idea about the best way to follow through i'm proud i'm staying on top of the episodes this time and i'm trying to get some videos out to you sooner we've had a change in-house with our team so we should be getting videos out sooner to you and if you have requests for things outside of love is blind let me know that too because i'm trying to get in the habit of like breaking these up with other things too so thank you guys so much for watching the video i ask that you like this video share it with anyone that loves love is blind content or therapist review content and please subscribe to my channel and thanks again to Babbel for sponsoring a portion of today's video get 60% off by using the link in my description box I appreciate you watching this video all the way until the end you didn't have to but the fact that you did helps me out so 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 much so thank you thank you thank you